Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Bradburn from toptipbio.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to normalize data for plotting on a heat map. As always, please consider subscribing if you are new around here. It really does help support the channel. If you enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like. And if something isn't clear, then feel free to drop me a message below and I'll do my best to help you out. Without normalization, plotting raw data onto a heat map can make it difficult to interpret the results. For example, this heat map contains raw gene expression data over different time points following a stimulus. Here, since the data are not normalized, all of the gene expression values, regardless of the gene, are used to create the color scale. This makes it hard to interpret the results since the majority of values may be at the low end of the scale with the odd value at the higher end of the scale. This can be seen here, with the majority of cells colored dark blue, indicating a low gene expression, with a few colored yellow, indicating a high gene expression value. A similar situation can arise when you are comparing responses on different scales or different units. It would make much more sense, for this example, to firstly normalize the gene expression data for each gene separately and replot this as a heat map. A heat map containing the normalized data can now be seen. Now, the data for each gene has been normalized so that the lowest gene expression value is set at 0% in dark blue, and the highest gene expression value is set at 100% colored in yellow. This makes it much more convenient to visually inspect and interpret the heat map. So let me now show you, step by step, how we achieve this. For this tutorial, I will start by creating a heat map containing my raw data. To do this, I will use a grouped table in GraphSheet. I'm going to enter and import data into a new table, and I'm going to enter and plot a single Y value for each point, and then click the Create button. I will paste in the data that I have prepared earlier. So this data comes from a series of cell culture experiments. I have gene expression data for 13 different genes, which are entered into the different columns. Each row represents a different treatment time point after the addition of a certain drug to my cells. So, the first row contains the baseline data. The second row indicates the data following 24 hours of initial treatment. And then there are 48 hours, 72 hours, and 96 hours post-treatment. Next, I'll create a heat map containing this raw data. It's worth noting that creating heat maps and the different customization options available are discussed in more detail in a separate video tutorial. But here, I will click on the connected graph sheet in the left hand window. I'll then go over to the heat map tab and click this. There are different heat map color schemes to choose from. In this example, I will select the Varidis heat map, which is the first option here. The Varidis color scheme was newly introduced in PRISM 8.4. Then I'll click the OK button. So we have the heat map containing the raw data. Each cell corresponds to the data point within the data table. The color of the cell in this case represents the gene expression value. Cells colored in yellow represent those with the highest gene expression. Cells colored in dark blue represent those with the lowest gene expression. At the minute, the row and color labels are just letters and numbers respectively. So I'll change these to be row and column titles so it's easier to read the heat map. To do this, I will double click on the heat map to open up the format graph window. I'll then go to the labels tab and then what I want to do under row labels, I want to change the label to be row titles. So in this case, the row titles are the different time points. And similarly for the column labels, I want to change this to be column titles. And I'm also going to change the orientation of these to be vertical. Just because there are quite a lot of columns here, if I don't present this as vertical, some of the labels will actually not be presented. Then I'll click the OK button to return back to the heat map. So this is the heat map containing my raw data. What I want to do now is to normalize my data so that each gene's data over time is normalized. That way I can visualize the time dependent gene expression pattern for each gene, but on the same graph. At the minute, the raw data does not achieve this since it is taking into account all of the data for all of the genes. 
So to normalize my data, I will click on my data table. I'll then click the analyze button at the top. Under transform and normalize, I'm going to select the normalize option. I want to normalize all of my gene data sets, so I'll leave them all selected and then click OK. This will open up the normalize parameters window. It's worth mentioning that each of these options here are discussed in more detail in a separate video tutorial. So essentially, the aim of normalization in this example is to take each gene's data separately and normalize the gene expression data so that the lowest value is 0% and the largest gene expression value is 100%. Then the values in between these two extremes are normalized accordingly. So what I want to do is to define 0% as the smallest value in each data set. I also want to define 100% as the largest value in each data set. I want the results to be presented as percentages, and I want to graph the results so that a new graph is created with the normalized data. So I'll ensure that the graph the results option is ticked. So I'll click the OK button to run the normalization. What I'm gonna do quickly is just change the name of my first data sheet to be raw data just so we can differentiate between the two. So now under the raw data table, there is now a new data table containing the normalized data. These values are now percentages and not gene expression values. If we look at the data for gene one, you can see that the value for 48 hours is 100%. And this is because if I go back to my raw data, see that this value here contains the largest gene expression value within this column. So it is set as 100%. Similarly, the value for 96 hours was set at 0%, and that's because if you look here, this value is actually the smallest value within this column, as you can see here. The cells with gene expression values between these two values will then have a value between 0 and 100%, and this normalization process is then repeated for each gene separately. So let's now create a heat map using this normalized data by clicking on the new graph sheet that has been created. I will select the grouped graph family. Again, I'll go to the heat map tab, select the varieties heat map option, and then click OK. Again, I'm going to repeat what I did before and add the column and row titles. So I'll double click on the graph and then go to labels. I want my row titles to be shown. And I also want the column titles to be shown. And these are going to be in vertical orientation and click OK. So let's look at this heat map in more detail. Now at the top of the scale, yellow indicates a normalized gene expression value of 100%. At the other end of the scale, dark blue indicates a normalized gene expression value of 0%. And the color in the middle, which is a turquoise color, indicates a normalized gene expression value of 50%. This normalization makes it so much easier to interpret the time series for each gene. So if you look at gene one, for example, you can see that as the time goes from baseline to 48 hours, there is a large upregulation. Then from 48 hours to 96 hours, there is a downregulation. Out of interest, you can see on screen a bar graph of the same normalized data for gene one. So you can see the pattern in a different way. Again, notice how there is an upregulation between baseline to 48 hours, and then a downregulation after this until 96 hours. Genes two and three also follow this rise and fall pattern, but genes four to 13 mostly start with their highest gene expression at baseline, indicated in yellow, and then as the time goes on, there is a down regulation. And there's a little exception here for gene 10 at 48 hours, where there was an up regulation. So that wraps up this tutorial. In this video tutorial, you have learned how to normalize data and plot this on a heat map. You should now understand the benefits of plotting normalized data in heat maps compared with using raw data, especially in the case of using gene expression data. In this example, plotting a heat map containing the normalized gene expression data for 13 different genes is visually easier to interpret compared with using the raw data. Did you like this video? Be sure to give it a like or leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified when a new video is added.